Hello and good evening, everyone. We are live from the Prince of Wales Virtual School. Uh, I'm here with the fantastic Quizmaster, Mr. McBean. How are you doing, Quizmaster McBean? Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you, Mr. Spracklin. Uh, loving your attire, and, sir. Looking very sophisticated there. Well, I like to try. <laughs> Quizmaster, Quizmaster costume on. <laughs> Quizmaster, Quizmaster. Oh, I like your costume, he said. <laughs> fantastic and uh we've got a whole new set of questions this evening isn't that right got a bit of a diff difference in format tonight mr mcbean do you want to explain well we've got four rounds of 10 questions tonight and the third round will be a picture round in which you'll be asked to identify the uh the animal or plant in the picture no it's uh, be the same again adult bit adult ones and uh children's ones so Fantastic. So we'd like to know, uh, to start off with this evening, we'd like to know who's here and who's playing along tonight. Um, all you need to take part is a pen or pencil and a piece of paper. So uh, no uh, crazy technology required, just a simple pen, pencil and a piece of paper. Um, and as Mr. McBean said, there will be four rounds this evening, uh, all, all with 10 questions in, 10 questions for the children and 10 questions for the adults. And what we're hoping to see tonight is... Uh, Who's going to be the winners, the adults or the children? It's always been uh, quite competitive, but in a friendly way. Um, and I think it's fair to say each week the children <coughs> have been successful, but you never know. Tonight, today might be the adults' turn to win. Who knows? We'll have to wait. It and might see. be. As the, the children's uh, round tonight, Mr. Spracklin, was actually written by Kate. Ah, who, by Mr. Brown. She's actually out on a walk in a minute. Oh, but, no, so no. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I but I will pass, oh, I'll pass your thanks on to Kate. Thank so, you very much, Kate. That's brilliant. And uh, we're very much looking forward to those questions. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give everyone a few seconds to make sure they've got their pen and paper. Um, now's a perfect time to put a comment in the comment box if you're watching. It'd be great to know who's here this evening and who's joining in. Uh, the Bishop family are joining in. Mrs. Bishop is on. Uh, lovely to see you, Bishop family. Hello from the Mystery Dyers. Uh, we're on number of four, two kids and two adults this evening. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're quiz ready in the Baker household. Uh, thank you, Bakers, for letting us know. Great that you're joining us this evening. Fantastic. Um, we will give you a couple more seconds just to let us know that you're there. Um, <laughs> and then we will get started with our very first round of questions. Um, and we will bring you one child question, then one adult question. So uh, let's <laughs> move on. And we'll go for it. Uh, the Green family are quiz ready. Good evening, Green family. The Bullocks are quiz ready. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We are ready for round number one. Hello from Olive, who's joining in. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Mrs. Thomas and Son are ready to take on the quiz. Hello from the Burgess family. Hello, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Right then, uh, Quizmaster McBean is back, and we are ready for... Uh, the first round. Okay. Oh, we've got a PS here from the Bullocks who says they loved Leafy Lemon, Mr. McBean. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> fantastic. Right then, on to the first question. We are on round number one and we are on the children's quiz that was prepared by Kate. Thank you very much, Kate. Round number one, question number one. Can you name the tallest structure in the French capital city? Paris. So that's question number one. Can you name the tallest structure in the French capital city of Paris? And for the adults, also with geography, which country in Europe, which also has land in Asia, has the largest population in Europe? Which country has the largest population in Europe? It also has part of it in Asia. Question number two for the children. How many hours are there in two days? Question number two for the children. How many hours are there in two days? And adults number two. 
Which English football team plays its home matches at Old Trafford? Which English football team plays its home matches at Old Trafford? Question number three for the children. How many leaves does a lucky clover have? How many leaves does a lucky clover have? And my number three. In the medical profession, the initials GP stand for what? In the medical profession, the initials GP stand for what? Question number four for the children. What sweet food made by bees using nectar comes from flowers? Uh, sorry, which sweet food made by bees using nectar comes from flowers? Which sweet food is <clears throat> made by bees using nectar from flowers? That's question number four for the children. And the adults number four is, whom did David Cameron succeed as British Prime Minister? Who did David Cameron succeed as British Prime Minister? Question number six for the children. Oh, question number five would be better first. Let's do that one. Question number five for the children. Which country was Cleopatra from? Which country was Cleopatra from? And my number five, in London, what can be found at Spitalfields, Portobello Road and Camden? In London, what can be found at Spitalfields, Portobello Road and Camden? Question number six for the children. In which continent would you find Brazil, Peru and Argentina? That's in which continent would you find Brazil? Peru and Argentina. And my number six, which British patron saint is celebrated annually on the 1st of March? Which British patron saint is celebrated annually on the 1st of March? Number seven for the children. In the nursery rhyme, who climbed up the water spouts? In the nursery rhyme, who climbed up the water spout? And my number seven. In which country was Adolf Hitler born? In which country was Adolf Hitler born? Question number eight for the, the children. In which forest would you find Robin Hood and his merry men? In which forest would you find Robin Hood and his merry men. That's question eight for the children. Eight for the adults. Which mountain range forms a natural border between France and Spain? Which mountain range forms a natural border between France and Spain? Question number nine for the children. What is Doctor Who's time machine called? That's what is Doctor Who's time machine called? My number nine. Goal shooter, goal attack and wing attack are all playing positions in which sport? Goal shooter, goal attack and wing attack are all playing positions in which sport? And the final question in this round for the children is... Canines, molars, premolars, and incisors are all types of what? That's canines, molars, premolars, and incisors are all types of what? And my final question for the adults. I think some of the children might get this. The underwater city of Bikini Bottom is the setting for which popular children's cartoon? The underwater city of Bikini Bottom is the setting for which popular children's cartoon? So we'd love to know what, how you think you did in that round. Do you think the questions were easy? Do you think they were hard? Do you feel confident about getting them all right? Let us know in the comment box right now. <laughs> Uh, 
There were some good questions in there, Mr. McBean. Some tricky ones to the children, I think, and uh, some, some ones for the adults there that maybe some of the children would get as well. It was a good round of questions there. Wondering what people thought. Well, do they find it easy or tricky? Uh, do they feel confident that what answers they got there? Let's see. We'll have some uh, responses through in a minute, I'm sure. Uh, let's see what we've got. Oh, someone says they're miss <laughs> The Bullocks say they're worried. Uh, <laughs> we found the adult ones okay. They were trickier children's question. Uh, Mystery Dyers are feeling quite good about our answers. Uh, we'll have to see wh when the answers come through if uh, we got them right there. I'm keen to know what Mrs. Bishop found of that round. Uh, she's tuning in. Uh, Mrs. Bishop, how did the bishops get on? Uh, would be good to know. Uh, we're going to find out now uh, what the answers are to round number one. So for the children, question number one, can you name the tallest structure in the French capital city, Paris? The answer for question number one for the children is the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is the tallest structure in the French capital city of Paris. The adults question in which country is the biggest population in Europe, which also has parts in Asia. The answer is Russia. Ah, fantastic. And question number two, how many hours are there in two days? The answer is 48. 48 hours is the answer to question number two. And question number two from the adults. I think I might let uh, Mr. Spracklin answer this. Which English football team plays its home matches at Old Trafford? The well, answer, Mr. Spracklin? Brilliant. Manchester United. Question number three for the children. How many leaves does a lucky clover have? The answer is four. Four leaves on a lucky clover. Number three for me, in the medical profession, the initials GP stand for General Practitioner. General Practitioner. Question number four, what sweet food is made by bees using nectar from flowers? The answer to question number four for the children is honey. Honey is made. Whom did David Cameron succeed as British Prime Minister? The answer is Gordon Brown. Ah, Gordon Brown. Uh, in which country, number five for the children, in which country was Cleopatra from? The answer is Egypt. And adults number five, in London, what can be found at Spitalfields, Portobello Road and Camden? The answer, markets. They're all places where there are public markets. Next question for the children. Question number six. In which continent would you find Brazil, Peru and Argentina? The answer is South America. South America is the answer to question number six for the children. My number six. Which British patron saint is celebrated annually on the 1st of March? The answer is that is St. David's Day. So the answer is David, St. David. Number seven for the children. In the nursery rhyme, who climbed up the water spout? Oh, sorry. In the nursery rhyme, who climbed up the water spout? The answer for number seven is Incy Wincy Spider. You did indeed. Number seven for me. In which country was Adolf Hitler born? The answer, Austria. Question number eight for the children. In which forest would you find Robin Hood and his merry men? And the answer is Sherwood or Nottingham Forest. Sherwood or Nottingham Forest. Number eight for me, which mountain range forms a natural border between France and Spain? The answer, the Pyrenees. The Pyrenees. Uh, question number nine for the children. What is Doctor Who's time machine called? The answer is a TARDIS. The TARDIS is the answer to question number nine for the children. And my number nine, goal shooter, goal attack and wing attack are all positions in netball. The answer, netball. And number 10, the final question in this round for the children. Canines, molars, premolars and incisors are all type of what? And the answer for number 10 is teeth. They are all types of teeth. And the final adult question in that round, the underwater city of Bikini Bottom is the setting for the popular cartoon, 
SpongeBob SquarePants. Fantastic. Let us know how you got on. How many did you get out of 10? <laughs> Some people are feeling like that, like that right now. Hopefully, not too many people are feeling. We've got uh, a few people sharing their scores. Before that, we've got a challenge on the uh, Russia answer. Is Russia Sorry? is Russia part of Europe? Well, I did explain. It's considered now to be part of Europe and Asia. Yeah, it's always one of those ones where I go, which continent is, and I kind of go, mm, well, you know, it's so big it's if in. Google it, if you Google it, you'll find it's uh, usually considered part of Europe and part of Asia. It's there are so about four countries big. that are in two continents, and Russia's one of them. Ah. I was thinking of Turkey when you were mentioning a kind of uh, Europe and Asia yeah. as well. Like that. that was another one that's in Europe and Asia, but only a very small amount of um, Turkey's in, considered to be in Europe, a little bit of Insta Istanbul. Uh, Dad got eight, Joel got six, uh, eight out of ten for David, ten Ooh, out of ten for cool. the adults, feeling a little smug in cool. the Baker household, yeah, and seven out of ten for the kids, so adults taking an early lead in that house, there's an early lead for the adults in the Bullock household as well, kids Ooh. got a score of ten out of ten, and the adults got a total of eight out of ten, eight out of ten for Mrs. Thomas, oh, ten out of ten, and nine out of ten for the bishops, uh, oops, it's seven cool. out of ten. For the kids there kids one in the burgess household tricky five for rosa and a woohoo 10 for mummy and daddy well done Two mummy and daddy five for oscar eight for mummy oh it's great to hear your scores um after the music we'll be back with round number two <laughs> Round number two for the children. Question number one. What are the two colours of the flag? Of, so which two colours make up the flag of England? What two colours make up the flag of England? And with England in mind, how many English monarchs have been called Edward? Ooh. How many English kings have been called Edward? Uh, question number two for the children in round number two. In the Jungle Book, what type of creature is Shia Khan? In the Jungle Book, what type of creature is Shia Khan? Uh, number 12 for the adults. Another, another liter literacy sort of question. In Tolkien's The Hobbit, what, kind, what type of fictional creature is Smaug? In Tolkien's The Hobbit, what type of creature is Smaug. Uh, question number 13 for the children. Who wrote The Gruffalo, Stickman and Sharing a Shell? That's who wrote The Gruffalo, Stickman and Sharing a Shell? And question number 13 for the adults. For what is the Danny, the Danny, an Australian slang term? For what is the Danny? An Australian slang term. Question number 14 for the children. What is the large river going through London called? What is the large river going through London called? Number 14 for me. Which Olympic sport takes place in a velodrome? Which Olympic sport takes place in a velodrome? Question number, oh, I'm getting confused. 15 for the children. If you had a problem with your tap, which one would you need? A plumber, a lawyer, or a carpenter? That's if you had a problem with your tap, which one of the following would you need? A plumber, a lawyer, or a carpenter? That's number 15 for the children. 
My number 15, prior to joining the Euro or the Euro, Europe, prior to, prior to having the Euro, what was the currency of Spain? So before the Euro, what currency did Spain have or use? Question number 16 for the children. Who wrote all about the Great Fire of London in his diary and is now very famous for this writing today? Who wrote all about the Great Fire of London in his diary and is very famous for it today? My number 16, St Mungo's Cathedral is in which British city? St Mungo's Cathedral is in which British city? Question number 17 for the children. How many legs does a ladybird have? How many legs does a ladybird have? My number 17. The Clifton Suspen Suspension Bridge, the Clifton Suspension Bridge spans which river? The Clifton Suspension Bridge spans which river? Question number 18 for the children. What colour are Smurfs? What colour are Smurfs? 18 for the adults. Freestyle and Greco-Roman are disciplines of which Olympic sport? Freestyle and Greco-Roman are disciplines in which Olympic sport? Oh, good question. Question number 19. In which country would you traditionally find kangaroos? That's for the children. In which country would you traditionally find kangaroos? My number 19. The cricket ground Trent Bridge is in which English city? The cricket ground Trent Bridge is in which British city? And the final question in this round for the children. How much wool did Bar Bar Black Sheep have? That's how much wool did Bar Bar Black Sheep have? And the final adult question in round two. What colour beret is worn by members of the Royal Marines? What colour beret is worn by members of the Royal Marines? So let us know how you got on on that round. Was it easy? Was it hard? Do you feel confident about your answers? Let us know in the comment box. We'd love to know how you think you did. Mr. McBean, the Bullocks are saying that they're loving all the sport questions. Oh, good, good. I think there might be a reason for that with uh, with a sports uh, team in the I house. Think that <laughs> could be a bit of an advantage for those. <laughs> um, this round was a bit harder, says the Baker family. Oh, we'll have to see when the answers come through, what people think. Okay, we're going to share the answers with you now. So question number 11 for the children. What are the two colours of the flag of England? And the answer is red and white answer number one for round two number 11 red and white how many english monarchs have been called edward there have been eight ah. uh, in the jungle book what type of creature is shia khan the answer is a tiger a tiger is the answer to question number 12 for the children and Another book question for the adults in Tolkien's The Hobbit. What type of fictional creature is Smaug? Smaug is a dragon. Ah, a dragon. Uh, question number 13 for the children. Who wrote The Gruffalo, Stickman and Sharing a Shell? The answer is Julia Donaldson. Julia Donaldson is the answer to question number 13. Number 13 for me. What is the Danny? In Australian slang term for, the answer is the toilet. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Number 14 for the children. What is the large river going through London called? The answer is the River Thames. The River Thames is the answer to question number 14. And my 14, if you were taking part in an Olympic sport in a velodrome, you would be cycling. Cycling. Number 15 for the children. If you had a problem with your tap, which one would you need? Plumber, lawyer or carpenter? The answer is plumber. Number 15 is plumber. I hope the mystery diet's got that one right. I imagine they did. Prior to joining the Euro, uh, the currency of Spain was the peseta. Peseta. Ah, the peseta. Uh, question number six. Dean, for the children, who wrote all about the Great Friar of London in his diary and is very famous for it today? The answer is Samuel Pepys, the man who liked to bury his cheese and wine. St Mungo's Cathedral is a uh, is in which British city? The answer is St Mungo's Cathedral is in Glasgow. In Glasgow. Question number 17 for the children. How many legs does a ladybird have? The answer is six. Six legs a ladybird has. Six legs on a ladybird, because there are, of course, six legs on all insects, and ladybirds are insects. Um, the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which river does it span? Well, I can tell you it spans the River Avon. Question number 70, uh, 18. What colour are Smurfs? They are blue. Smurfs are blue in colour. Freestyle and Greco-Roman are disciplines of which Olympic sport? The answer, wrestling. Ah. Question number 19. In which country would you traditionally <laughs> find kangaroos? And that would be Australia, the same place as the Dunnies. The cricket ground Trent Bridge is in which English city? Well, you didn't really need to know about cricket to answer that question. You needed to know where the River Trent was. And that is in Nottingham. Ah, no, Trent Nottingham. Bridge, Nottingham. Question number 10, 20. How much wool did Barbar Black Sheep have? Well, Barbar Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. Three bags full is the answer. And the final question for the adults in round two, what colour beret is worn by the Royal Marines? The answer, green. They are the green beret. The Royal Marines wear green Fantastic. Let us know how many you got out of 10 in that round. Did the adults win? Did the children win? Are we feeling super, super confident? <laughs> or maybe feeling a bit nervous? <laughs> Not quite sure what that sound effect was, but there we go. It's meant to be a, meant to be a nervous sound effect, uh, but there we go. Uh, people saying they found that one a bit harder. Mr. Thomas says it was blimminard. Uh, yeah. The mystery die is a bit, bit trickier in our house. Um, and on the question of whether you need a lawyer, a plumber, or a carpenter to fix a tap, the uh, plumbers say you need a lawyer. So <laughs> Dad says a lawyer, says uh, Imogen. Uh, David David got eight out of ten. Well done. Uh, Dad got seven. Joel got nine. That's Joel closing the gap there. Or oh, maybe Dad. Eight for Oscar. Six for six for Mummy. Uh, the kids got the total score of nine out of ten, and the adults got the total score of eight out of ten. Uh, so that's in the mystery household. In the bakers, it was seven out of ten for the adults and eight out of ten for the kids. Um, in the Bishop household, it was 10 out of 10 for the children and 8 out of 10 for the adults. Um, I'm wondering if in the Bishop, Bishop household you should be playing the adult round, children. But, you know, we'll uh, let you have your own interpretations. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, the wonderful. Well done. Fantastic. Should we move on to our new edition, Mr. McBean? A new, a new round. Round three is a picture round. Now, in this round, you simply have to give us the name of the the piece of nature in in before your eyes okay it's as simple as that it is name of the thing but we want its proper name it's just not just a bird it's not just a fish 
It's not just a tree. We need what type of bird, fish, and tree it might be. Okay, you get the idea. So there's the same idea. Mr. Spracklin's going to show uh, one which is for the children, which is a little bit easier. And then another one, the next one will be for the adults. And uh, obviously, have a go at all of them. Enjoy. And hopefully, the pictures will come around. Mr. Spracklin, I'm leaving the technology to you here. Yeah, definitely. So first one. I'll put these on right now. Let's do the first one now. So the first one is for the children. And I'll give you I'll put each one up for about five seconds or so. This first one is for the children. And then we've got our first adult picture. Oh, this one's for the adults. Gonna leave that out for a few seconds. Okay, the next one is for the children. Have a good look, children. Do you know the name of that bird? Lots of those are the school field at the minute, Mr. Spracklin. There are. They're nesting up by, by, by the car park. Ah, maybe up by the orchard there. Uh, next one for the adults. Ah. Do you know the name of the bird? I think Mr. Mrs. Thomas will be good at this round. I know Mrs. Thomas. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Bishop as well. Okay, next image for the children. Ah. Some of the children have been having a go at making honey out of these, Mr. McBean. They have. Although I, th I think it's more like you make it out of sugar and add some dandelion. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say the name. <laughs> uh, on to the adults. On to quickly, quickly. Not giving that one away. Uh -huh. Lots of this about at the moment. Well, it's just coming up. It's coming up now, isn't it? This growing. I might put this full screen up, actually. Let's make it a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, on to the next one. This one is for the children. Oh, I think we'll all get this one. Very popular during the war, of course. On to the next one for the adults this time. Bit more tricky, that one. And the next picture is for the children. This one's for the children. Can you name this animal? I get these in my garden, Mr. McBean. Really? Wow. Yeah, quite frequently. We've got some pictures on it. I must show everyone. Uh, next one. For the adults. Well, this is kind of tricky because it could be one of two things, but you have to get it right, I'm afraid. Ooh. So 50-50. The, the clues with the tail, that's the the distinguishing feature between the two possibilities so and the next one for the children have a good look we've got, children. we've got those in the school pond mr spracklin those we have got lots of them in the pond we've got three different types of these in the school pond i'll tell you more about that later uh, give it away again if I'm not careful. The next one, <laughs> the next one for the adults. So I want to know what type of fish this is, obviously. <laughs> not just fish. <laughs> yeah, fish isn't good enough, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> these are all these are all things that you can see around here. Everything that I've put is all it's all local. And the next one. For the so children. And we're looking for what's in the centre of this picture, I think. Well, it's the tree, I think. The oh, tree, will, uh, the, what's in the middle, hopefully, will give away. I think if you can name the thing in the middle, that's perhaps good enough to get the mark. But it was the tree we're after. That's for the children. And then the next one for the adults. 
And again, it's the tree I'm after here. We can't say helicopters. Right. <laughs> Not a helicopter tree. <laughs> oh, I'm looking out my window now, Mr. McBean, and there's a squirrel on the fence, reception fence. Ah. Right now, going right, right around the edge. He's, he's come from uh, come from around the corner, and he's walking on the top of the fence. There, the bushy tail. We've got lots of squirrels at school. Right, moving on to the next one. That was a bit of a distraction. Uh, oh, for the children. Mm, the snake isn't good enough for this, folks. You've got to try and tell me or tell us what type of snake it is. But we don't see too many of these around. But they are, you know, you don't have to go too far to find them. I've actually seen one in Dorchester Town before. Up by the old Roman townhouse, bizarrely. But you'll get them up by Hardy's Monument. I've just been taking a picture of that squirrel. I'll see if I can share it in a minute. Right, moving on. Next one for the adults. Quite tricky, this. Process of elimination, possibly. Because it wasn't the same as the children's one. Oh, not the same as the children's one. And then, is that the last one or is there any more? Oh, got some more. Another one for the children, this one. So another tree. What type of tree, though? And then another one for the adults. Can you name... And again, we want the tr type of tree. For the children now. Now, these are all types of what? What would be the generic name for those? They're all types of what? And for the adults... Ooh. I think that's the last one. And just to help you out with the last one there, it's the colour of the beak which distinguishes that from some options that you might think. I think there are some more. No, that's just the, that's the 20. There may be some oh, more on the PowerPoint, but I thought we'd leave it at that. Fantastic. That's so that's, let 10 that's 10 each, yeah. Let us know how you got on with that round. We'd love to know. Uh, put a comment in the comment box and we'll be back in two seconds. <laughs> got a few comments mr mcbean um joel's joel and lucia's dad says dad is shouting for mum he's finding this that round tricky <laughs> see if he can bring some help in uh the kids are feeling confident in that one uh mrs bishop says do you want the latin name for them <laughs> no well, i wasn't going to tell you whether you were right or not so <laughs> uh david says we feel we did good in that round uh, the mystery diet says that was extremely hard for the grown ups. Tricky round, not so bad for the kids. Oh, we'll have to see what people thought of the answers there. Um, before I do that, I want to share. I've just put these. Uh, let me just see if I can put them on the screen a second. I've uh, uploaded my photos I've just taken of the squirrel, Mr. McBean. Here we go. Wow. You're very clever with your. If I, I, don't know if it, I don't know if everyone can see, but just there. Oh, uh, yeah. Out of my window, I've zoomed in, look, and there's the squirrel. He's moving along. You see his bushy tail going along the fence, look, by reception. Obviously, look for a spot of food there or something. Uh, fantastic. Right, then, let's go through these answers, Mr. McBean. I'll put them back up on the screen, and uh, we can see how everyone got on. Uh, see if we got any 10 out of 10s. So, let's see. Oh, we'll go right back in a second. That's not the pictures we need. Oh, getting a bit confused. Right, let's go. This was the first one. 
I'll let you do the so that's children's question. And of course, that's that's the children's number one. That's a robin. Uh, first one is a robin. And the first one for the adults is a chaffinch. That's a male chaffinch. They're busy making lots of noise at the moment. And this is a magpie. So we got lots of those at school, nesting by the car park and by the meadow. And uh, yeah. sorry, by the um, orchard. So that's for the children, that one. Yeah, that's a magpie. And here we have a starling. Again, they're busy feeding their chicks at the minute, the starlings. This, of course, is a dandelion, which I think I might have given away. <laughs> You've been making dandelion honey using lots of sugar and lots of dandelions. And this is Herb Robert, which is a pretty weed that we get growing up around this time of year. Herb Robert. This, of course, is a pigeon. That's a standard looking pigeon isn't it that one and this one's quite tricky for the adults i think this is a little egret you'll notice it's got yellow feet little egrets used to be quite rare but we get them quite a lot now obviously they're they're wildfowl they're water birds little egret this is a badger mr brock the badger there and the adults are going to be going, oh, is that a stoat or is it a weasel? Well, actually, it's a stoat. That oh, I went with a weasel. Not a weasel. Yeah, it's a stoat. And apparently you can tell by the tail. Oh. It's not something you see very often. Although I have seen weasels walking up towards Maiden Castle uh, on that little path there quite recently. Oh, so they're around. Um, either stoats or weasels. Anyway, I don't, couldn't really tell. This is a newt. We've got lots of newts in the school pond. We have palmate newts, which is what this is in the picture, a palmate newt. And oh sorry, no, this is a this is a yeah, this is a palmate newt, that's right. And um, we have smooth newts as well, which are actually a kind of rounder, smoother shape. And we've got the uh, our invaders from um, from another country, alpine newts as well, which are a bit bigger and bright orange. But that is a palmate newt. But you need to say newt to get the answer, Mark, for that one. We won't talk about the alpine newts. It's controversial. Moving on. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who know your fish, these are minnows. This is a picture of a minnow. Lovely little fish. Lots of those about in the rivers at the minute. Easy to spot in the streams around here. This is an oak tree with an acorn there, clearly visible. It's an oak tree. And this is the fruit from a sycamore, the seeds from a, sorry, not fruit, the seeds from a sycamore tree. Sycamore. This is an adder, which is the Britain's venomous snake. That's to say that it can give a bite that can actually cause some damage because it's got venom in it or poison in it. And um, so adder is the answer to that. And the adults one, which is another snake, is actually a smooth snake. That's not a grass snake, it's a smooth snake. And I learned the other day that if you go to Arm, which is quite close to here, there's lots of reptiles there. In fact, it's quite famous because all the different British reptiles that you can get in, the, you know, in Britain actually all live around Arm. And the smooth snakes, these guys in this picture here, actually eat the adders, which I thought, wow, I thought the adders were like the big nasty mean one because they're venomous. But no, the smooth snakes actually feed on the adders, among other things, of course. So that's a smooth snake. Uh, Joel said he's seen one on the Seeker Trail. I don't know whether that was. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. I don't know whether that was one of the yeah, adders. Smooth snake. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. you probably get either of them down that direction, but yeah. yeah. You don't want to get too close to adders. This is a horse chestnut. Also, we call them conquer trees, don't we? So if you said conkers, I think we'll let you have the mark for that. But its proper name is a horse chestnut. And the adult one to go with that is not a horse chestnut, but a sweet chestnut. So 
that's a sweet chestnut and i didn't expect you to name all the different types here but these are all different types of geese so the answer is goose the first top one in the top left there is a canada goose and then you've got uh, a a barnacle goose underneath that and then to the right hand side you've got a grey lag goose but they're all types of geese so the answer goose and the final one for the adults that's quite a tricky one this because the, lots of these birds look a bit similar is it a crow is it a rook is it a raven is it well it's a rook that one is a rook so unlucky if you said crow but it's that would be wrong it is a rook we'd love to know how you got on give us your scores in the comment box <laughs> Okay, so how do we get on in that round? It was actually the adder that uh, Joel did see when he was out and yeah. about in Devon. So uh, that was good. Oscar got eight out of ten. Mummy got not so good this time. That's okay. Uh, always good to know how we got on, everyone. Uh, boys got ten. Adults got eight. Great job, guys. Mum and dad, three. Joel got nine. Well done, Joel. Uh, seven out of ten for Mrs. Thomas. Uh, David got six out of ten. Well done, David. Uh, kids got eight. Adults got four with a sad face, says the Wells family. Uh, adults got three that round and ten for Holly. Well done, Holly. Wow, good score. Kids got eight out of ten and adults got four out of ten. They're hanging their heads in shame, <laughs> says the mystery guys. Uh, kids got 25 out of 30 so far. Well done, Rach. Uh, well done, Burgess family. Hard round for the adults, five and nine for Rosa. Well done, Rosa. Always great. Rosa. To um, fantastic effort. Well done. We are now moving into our final round, which I will edit the slide because it should say round number four because we had picture round number three. So round number four, Mr. McBean, our final round today. Um, we're going to head over for our final round of questions. So for the children, moving into our final round, number, which will, this will be number 31. What is the capital city of Scotland? Round, uh, question number 31. What is the capital city of Scotland? And my 31, which Middle Eastern city is also the name for a type of artichoke. Which Middle Eastern city is also the name for a type of artichoke? Fantastic. Number 32 for the children. What does the animated, sorry, who does the animated character Princess Fiona marry? Who does the animated character Princess Fiona marry? And my question number 20, 32 is, in mythology, Romulus and Remus were brought up by which animal? In Greek mythology, or no, Roman mythology, or probably both, um, Romulus and Remus were brought up by which animal? Question 33 for the children. What do witches fly on? What do witches fly on? And 33 for me, which is Britain's oldest Sunday newspaper, published for the first time in 1791? What is Britain's oldest Sunday newspaper, published for the first time in 1791? Uh, question number 34 for the children. What was the youngest child called in The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe? What was the youngest child called in The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe? And my next question is, what is Prince William's second name? What is Prince William's second name, by which I mean his middle name, his name that comes after William? The answer is not Windsor. Question number... Prince William's second name? Sorry. Question number 35 for the children. What do caterpillars turn into? What do caterpillars turn into? And my twin 35. 
What does a Geiger counter measure? What does a Geiger counter measure? Uh, question number 36 for the children. Which continent is missing from this list? I'll say that again before I read the list. Which continent is missing from this list? Africa, Europe, South America, Asia, Oceania, and North America. That's Africa, Europe, South America, Asia, Oceania, and North America. My next question. Who in 1991 became the first driver to win the first four races of a Formula One season? Who in 1991 became the first driver to win four races of a Formula One Grand Prix season? Question number 37 for the children. In the alphabet, which letter comes after the letter S? In the alphabet, which letter comes after the letter S? A cricket question next. Cricket. In 1995, Jack Russell, the England wicketkeeper, took how many catches in a test match to create a new world record? In 1991, Jack Russell took how many catches in a test match to create a new world record? Fantastic question. Right. What number 38 for the children? What type of animals are Labradors, Spaniels, and Poodles? What type of animals are Labradors, Spaniels, and Poodles? And my 28. And I'm not going to sing this to you, so you have to think about what it might sound like if it was sung to you. No New Year's Day to celebrate. No chocolate-covered candy hearts to give away. Is a line from which song? I'll say it again. No New Year's Day to celebrate. No chocolate-covered candy car candy hearts to give away. That's a line in which song? Number, we are on to number 38 for the children, uh, 39 even, our penultimate question. Who is our current Prime Minister? Who is our current Prime Minister? My 29, in which year did the Battle of Waterloo take place? In which year did the Battle of Waterloo take place? And the final question of the whole quiz for the children. This is our last question. What is a quarter of 20? What is a quarter of 20? And the final adult question. Roughly what proportion of DNA do humans and chimpanzees share? Is it 77%, 92% or 98.5%? What proportion of DNA do we share with chimpanzees? Is it 77%, 92% or 98.5%? Let us know how you got on. Put a comment in that comment box. How's everyone feeling? Was that an easy round? Was that a good round for you? Let's see how everyone's feeling. Uh, it was a good quiz, Mr. McBean. Lots of questions. Nice to have the picture round as well. Uh, let's review the answers from that final round, shall we? Uh, so the final round for the children. What is the capital city of Scotland? The answer was Edinburgh. Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland. My 31, which Middle Eastern city is also the name of a type of artichoke? The answer, Jerusalem. Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem.
Uh, number 32 for the children. What does the uh, who does the animated character Princess Fiona marry? The answer is Shrek. Shrek marries Princess Fiona. In mythology, Romulus and Remus were brought up by which animal? The answer, wolf. Uh, number 33, what do witches fly on? They fly on broomsticks. Broomsticks is the answer to question number 33 for the children. 33 for the adults, which is Britain's oldest Sunday newspaper first published in 1791? The answer, The Observer. Ooh. Question number 34. What was the youngest child called in The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe? The answer is Lucy. Lucy is the youngest child in the book The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe. What is Prince William's second name? His second name is Arthur. Hmm. Question number 35. What do caterpillars turn into? Caterpillars turn into butterflies or moths. Butterflies or moths. Number 25 for me. What does a Geiger counter measure? A Geiger counter measures radiation. Radiation. Number 35. 36 for the children. Which continent is missing from this list? Africa, Europe, South America, Asia, Oceania, and North America. The continent that was missing is Antarctica. Antarctica is the answer to question 36. 36 for me. Who in 1991 became the first driver to win the first four races of a Formula One season? The answer, Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna. The next question for the children. In the alphabet, which letter comes after the letter S? The answer is the letter T. And there had to be a cricket question. In 1995, <laughs> Jack Russell took how many catches in a test match to create a new world record? The answer is he took 11 catches. Two wow. innings, of course, in a test match. So took some in each innings. 11 catches. Uh, what type of animal are Labradors, Spaniels and Poodles? That was question number 38 for the children. And the answer is dogs, a dog. They're all types of dog. From which song do you get the lines, no New Year's Day to celebrate, no chocolate covered candy hearts to give away? I just called to say I love you by Stevie Wonder is the answer. I just called to say I love you by Stevie Wonder. Beautiful singing, Mr. McBean. Number 39 for the children. Who is our current prime minister? The answer is Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is the answer to question number 39. In which year did the Battle of Waterloo take place? The answer, 1815. And I know lots of people have thought, isn't it 1812? The 1812 overture, etc. Uh, no, because the 1812 overture was something to do with uh, Russia and the Russian front and stuff. But Waterloo was 1815. And the final question for the children, what is a quarter of 20? The answer is five. And the final adult question, roughly what proportion of their, d their DNA do humans and chimpanzees share? The answer is 98.5%. That's how similar we are to chimpanzees, folks. Some of us have got more than others, though, I reckon. Let us know how you got on. Put a comment in that comment box. We'd love to know how you got on. Right then, let's see how people got on, Mr. McBean. We've got a we've got a question for Mr. McBean first from the adults in the Mystery Dyer household. All they, right. They say, "Why is there always a cricket question?" <laughs> There's only one. There's only one. I think I know There's why. 
The Trent Bidge question's not strictly cricket, really, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Uh, David got six out of ten in that round. Well, and David, adults got five, and Holly got eight. Six for Oscar this time. The kids got a total of seven out of ten. Adults got five out of ten. Uh, in the book. So overall, Joel won. Well done, Joel. He stormed well done, Joel. Again, and he won by nine. That's our first victory. Uh, full marks for the boys, only five for the adults. Tough questions, say the bishops. Uh, we, we're here to we're here to get everyone thinking, isn't that, isn't that right, Mr. McBean? That's right. Always, always good to get people thinking. Uh, Rosa won with 31, and the adults got 28. Ooh, quite close there. Yes, that was a really close outcome, actually. Well done, Rosa, for winning that that very tight contest. Always good to hear. Oscar, good won, Oscar won overall in the greenhouse. Well done, Oscar. Congratulations. Well, Oscar. It's been wonderful to see everyone joining us for a quiz again. We'll have to do another one in a couple of weeks' time. Next week, we've got the disco back on Friday night, so do get your song requests in. We'd love to see uh, and hear what you'd like to listen to next week. Overall, Holly won 33 out of 40, and the adults got 25 out of 40. A good start for the adults. Went downhill quickly in the Baker family. Uh, children are victorious. But mum is victorious with those onion barges. Yes, you very much are. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for our onion barges today, Mr. Dyer ha Household. We very much enjoyed those in our school. Uh, thank you very much for hosting. Thank you for joining us. Uh, not a good round. Three out of ten for Mrs. Thomas. Uh, kids won again in the Burgess Household, they say. Uh, Charlie won overall. Well done, Charlie. Great result. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Quizmaster McBean, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very That's much. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a happy evening. See you soon. For, uh, questions for the children's round. Uh, we will be back tomorrow morning, everyone, for some more Good Morning Power at half past nine. We'll see you then.